I just want to thank everybody for being here tonight. I know that it's kind of like been a busy time for a lot of people. So I'm just excited that you guys are all taking time out to be here with us. I'm super, super excited to introduce one of my favorite people in the whole world. And her name is Song Lopez. So thank you for being here. Um, for those of you that don't know Song, she's actually a freelance makeup artist and she creates some of the world-class looks for some of the most high profile artists and, and she creates some of the globe. Um, and through her talent, knowledge, reliability and charismatic personality, she has positioned herself as one of Las Vegas's foremost makeup artists. Her light and fresh approach to painting faces has earned her respect and loyalty with both Hollywood's elite and many of the world's most renowned photo photographers and directors. She's also an intuitive life coach, and you'll probably see her brand across social media, which is Sass Goddess. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Song. Blessings, guys. Thank you so much for taking this time and giving this to yourself. We're going to um, spend the next half hour just giving ourselves some self-love, self-care. So, And I'm going to give you a lot of tips and tricks and interact with you. So please just take a deep breath and let go of the day because you're here right now in the present. And the biggest gift you can give yourself right now is to be right here with me. I want you guys to just focus on feeling um, and playing and enjoying yourself. You know, makeup is an expression and it's creative play. And when we do creative play is where we learn. And so this is why it's so exciting for me to be able to share my intuitive uh, guidance along with this makeup because this is what got me through all of last year. I got up every day and I practiced putting myself together because that's what made me feel good. And I really would like you guys to focus on that. If you feel like it's daunting, then again, get into the more of the play with it and let's just have some fun guys. And if anything comes up, please don't you know, hesitate to ask. I'm here to share everything that I have and all my knowledge I wanna gift to you. So um, the first thing we're gonna start off with, um, actually I do have a couple of tools that I think that you should have before I go into the um, products that we're gonna use. If you have a little bobby pin, just the like normal standard size, grab a bobby pin, or you could grab a little business card, a piece of paper, a post-it note, anything like that. Those two things are gonna be some of the techniques that I use for later on. So if you want, you can go grab that. And while you're grabbing that, just in case you don't know what brushes to have, I'm going to share those with you as well. So the brushes that I'm going to be using, so there's this big fluff brush. If you can see it, these are all Moda's brushes, you guys. Um, this was our eight pack, I believe, um, that I got. This is an angle brush. This is a little like, it's like a detailing brush. Sometimes people use it for lips or eyeliners. A flat brush, like a little fluff fat, flat brush. And then there's even a little one. We may not use all these, but these are just options. And this is like a little angle fluffy brush as well. So it's kind of dense, but has a little point to it. That's for being able to detail as well. So just make sure you have a variety. You could have just have a few of these brushes. You don't need all of them. And if you don't have it, don't worry. If you just need to use one brush, just make it fun and enjoy it. And just, just that's the way it is. It's all good, right? Okay, so these are the brushes. So oh, we have it. They do come in a little kit that Motives has. So if you're kind of looking to upgrade your brushes and you don't have those yet, um, they would be a great brush kit to look at. But like Song said, just grab whatever brushes you have and, and use what, what you have. Perfect. Okay, and then the products that we are gonna be working with today is the Static Palette. I love this palette because it pulls me out of the mundane, the neutral colors, the, you know, everyday safe colors. And this brings us into play, a creativity, a creativity way to get you into it. trying colors maybe that you didn't think you would. And by doing that, see here, the colors we're gonna use, it's called Pandora, which is this beautiful like bubblegum pink. And we're going to use hardwired. It is a shimmer color that's almost like um, 
like a lilac, kind of like a silver undertone, but there's definitely a little bit of purple in it, which I love for this little Galentine's look that we're gonna do. So Pandora, Hardwire, and then Fever. Fever is like a, a muted maroon, kind of a brighter pink color, I would say. And uh, that is gonna be for the daytime kind of Valentine's if you just wanna run around and then we're gonna pump it up for the evening time with Void for those that wanna go there. So if you wanted something a little more smokier, we'll add Void. If you wanna just keep it the way it is, that is up to you, you get to choose. I'm just gonna have both those looks for you. And then we're gonna do the uh, precision liner. This is uh, pitch black. And this point on this pen is amazing. It's, it's, it's got a very nice tip with a very firm handling. So you're not, the brush isn't bending all over, streaking all over the place. And what I like about this is once it's on, it doesn't move, but it is still, you can still work with it while it's still a little wet. Oh, and make sure you have Q-tips too. Q-tips because, you know, even though I'm a makeup artist, I just want you to know, like, I have days where... I'm not on point. And that's why I like taking the deep breath and getting in the intention. So keep in mind on Valentine's Day, the self-love that you give to yourself, I want you to really believe in that attention, intention that you're putting the makeup on. I want you to feel it. Give yourself all that love. Because when you, if you do have a partner and you're going to spend that day with them, imagine all that love you fill yourself up with first. And then it it goes, the energy transfers over to your loved one. So when you love on yourself and you give all yourself that love, you pour it out into everyone else. So while you're doing your makeup, when I do my makeup in the mirror, it's always, you're, you're amazing. I love you. Oh, look at this color. Oh, I don't really like that color. Okay, so intuitively you're present, you're able to change it. Don't get frustrated. You can just wipe it off and try something new. So just have fun with it and let your intuition and your play come in. And then you're just gonna learn organically just by having fun. So that is just something I really like to instill when it comes to um, makeup, because I think sometimes it can feel daunting and it, it shouldn't, it should be fun. Okay, the next thing, um, the final thing, well then Lee is going to do the lashes. Yeah, I'm gonna go over um, how to apply falsies. So if you guys have, you can have one of the, um, Moda's lashes that we have in our bundle or just grab whatever lashes you have. I do really like these because they feel very comfortable on. They're very natural looking, but we do have very natural all the way up to a little bit more bold. So I don't know which I'm going to use yet, but grab whatever you have. Grab some adhesive. Um, you might want to grab a tweezers. That's always good. I do like to curl my lashes and put a little mascara on before I put my artificial lashes on. So you can grab that. If artificial lashes intimidate you, it's okay. You don't have to do them. But I know that it's something that a lot of people ask, like, do you have any tips on how to apply them? Especially if you haven't really used them, um, you know, on a regular basis, it might be a little intimidating. So that's kind of my goal today is kind of push you. So if you're ready for that, grab your lashes and we will, we'll have fun with that later. I love that you said that, you know, for us to really grow, we have to challenge ourselves. And if you're here today and you have lashes and you're just like, oh, I'm nervous about it, shake those nerves off, get in there and let's play because that's how you are going to learn how to do it is just by being in action with it. So I encourage you to grab them, even if you may not feel like it and let's just, we'll help you. Okay. We're here to help you. Um, and then we're going to do lips and there is a four pack uh, deal that we have going on right now, special. And I have one of the colors. This is Fetch that I'm gonna be using. It's more of a neutral skin tone for those of you that don't wanna go into the red. Um, I will be using Fetch. I love that, it's part of our Pure Love lip set. So it's super exciting and new and um, there's so many beautiful ranges of colors. So I'm excited to see that on you. And I think Lee, you're going for red, right? We talked about it before. Yeah, I have all, all of them in the Pure Love uh, gift set. And I don't know, you guys like, let me know in the comments which color that you'd like me to use. I know. Um, with fetish songs going to be using a little bit more of like a neutral kind of tone so if you want to see more of a bold red lip i can do that with it is actually called uh fire but let me know in the comments what you'd like to see okay so is everyone ready We're ready to play have fun we're gonna get started okay so like i said the first color we're gonna start off is with pandora and that is the pink. And what I'm gonna do is take 
the bigger kind of fluffier brush that I have. And we're gonna dip it. And you guys can come along with me or if you'd rather me do one eye. Um, so after I dig, you can just do it together. What I'm gonna do is place the color so how, how I'm doing this color is there is a bone here and then my crease is very low. So what I like to do is just draw it up a little bit and I'm just gonna place it right here in this corner in like a V, come down. I don't really wanna go too far into the center into a little V. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, and I'm gonna do it to the other side. Oh. Well, I just wanna make sure if anybody has questions, if they're ready before I go on. Okay, does everyone get that? Beautiful. Okay. I think and it looks good and I did start um, with eye base. So for those of you that are kind of like, okay, what, you know, what should I put on? Eye base is a really great product to start with because everything's gonna look very true to color. You won't get that creasing or your eyeshadow won't disappear. Um, well, I know we're doing it at night now, but <laughs> regularly during the day. Yes, the I, I definitely put in, uh, use the uh, eye base. And what I love about the eye base is you don't need a lot of product. You just need a little bit. And when I first used it, I was heavy handed with it. So if any of you have had tried the eye base and maybe you, um, cause this is what happened to me. So I'm just sharing my experience. Um, I was using too much product and I wasn't warming it up. So sometimes I like to put it on a little uh, in the back of my hand or on my finger and use it or on a brush, but you don't need a lot and it works extremely effective. Okay. So I'm doing the other side. I'm just making sure everyone is with me. Yeah. Shondell. Hi, beautiful. It does go a long way. I also love these um, eyeshadows because you can kind of build up the color too. So if you're a little intimidated, just start with a little. And then if you're, you know, getting a little bit more risky, just pack it on and then blend it out. Exactly. And because our products are so pigmented, you can sometimes put it on and be like, oh my gosh, this is too much. But here's what I have to say. The thing that I always say is, we have to practice blending anyways, because I think that is one of the biggest things that people have challenges with, with makeup. So when in doubt, blend it out. And all you have to do is just keep blending it and eventually it'll just kind of give a nice airbrush look. So don't be afraid, you know, to play with it and experiment with it. Again, you'll find out what you like, what you don't like, how much you want to use. And, you know, it's just all magic, whatever, however you want to do it. Okay, are we moving on guys? Is everyone ready? We are gonna to go to hardwired. It is a shimmer color. It's kind of got the purple under, like a little bit of a lilac -y undertone and it's more of a highlight. But what I like to do with this one is add it right here to my eyelid. And you're gonna put it all over, just the eyelid. I don't want it to go way up here. I just wanna stick it right here on my eyelid. That's right, Danielle. Blend, blend, blend. Oops, I was looking and I grabbed a different color. Okay, so we'll do that to both sides. I like how it adds just a little pop of shimmer to the eyelid. It does and it kind of makes your, give you that little glimmer in your eye, if you will. Okay, how's everyone doing? Is everyone having fun and playing and being light about it? Yeah, I love this pop. I was gonna ask you, do you recommend to do it with like your finger to kind of warm up the shadow? But it ended up having a pop on its own with the brush. So that was good. Yes, yeah. There, I, there just, there's no rules in makeup. Everyone has their technique and their way. But again, you can't learn your technique and your way if you're not playing and enjoying and learning what you like. Find out what works for you. I actually change my technique quite often, to be honest with you, because I'm playing all the time. So I'm learning new things. I'm like, oh, well, maybe I like this. And then I'm like, I want to go back to my old way. So this is how I've learned how to, you know, do makeup. Everyone's like, well, I'm not as good as you, or I don't know, you know, do it like you do. And this is what I ask them. I go, do you play? Do you practice? I'm like, well, no. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's the key. So just making sure that you're just taking that 20 minutes to yourself, just experimenting, I think is the best way that I like to say it. 
Okay, so now that we have this look, which is really beautiful, I would just wear this running around, you know, just for a natural look, but I am gonna pump it up because I wanna take that pink to the next level and it's gonna be fever. And I am gonna use this brush, which is like a blending brush, a crease brush is I think the way that they, that we say it sometimes. I just know these brushes organically. So I just put it on. So when I'm trying to explain it, like trying to remember what the actual brushes are for. Okay, Again, this product goes a long way. So do not be alarmed. Make sure you're tapping it and just getting the excess off. And then what I'm going to do is just add it right in, but just a little bit higher. You'll see there's a little bone. I just kind of want the brush to press in and rest on that bone and just roll roll it out in that area and then bring it down into the V right here into your, um, to the bottom lower uh, top lash line. I actually, one technique that I learned a long time ago, if you're really trying to get like a smoky eye is to look forward, put the brush right here and then just let it roll into that crease, just looking forward. And it's gonna give you a really beautiful kind of blended out smoky, um, shadow in that area. So as I just look forward and then I pull it into a V. So roll out, do not go past that halfway mark. Just keep it really, what you can do is just blend. So it has a gradient effect. So you're blending out towards that center. So yeah, I'm spending a little more time on this part. So when I do the first two colors, it's kind of, you know, okay, I got it. Blending is super important. Um, Jessica asked why I'm only going halfway because that's the style that I want for my eye. If you feel that your eye shape and you know your eye and you want it to go in, again, no rules of makeup. Some people, their eyes are um, farther apart and it looks good for them to put the shadow in. Um, some people have, if their eyes you know, are farther apart, then you probably want to pull that in. If they're closer together, you don't want to put color on the inside, you wanna keep the color on the outside. So that would be some reason, that's not why I'm doing it. But thank you for asking that question, by the way, and contributing, that was really a great question. So now I can explain. Um, so shadows are for contouring, highlighting for your face, for your eyes. So when you're using shadows, just think of it like this, anything you wanna recess, take back, uh, deepen. Uh, like for me, I wanna deepen my crease because I have, a really nice eyelid, but my, I mean, a really nice eye base, but my eyelid's short. I have a little bit of, I'm half Asian, so I have a little bit of a, a teeny little crease here. So I like to create a crease up here. So I'm contouring with the eyeshadow where I want my crease to go. Your eyes may be, are different than mine. So keep in mind, anytime you're shadowing in, you're darkening, you're, you're taking away, you're deepening. So if your eyes are closer together, don't bring too much shadow onto the inside, keep it light. If your eyes are farther apart, uh, pull the shadow in. Wait, did I say that right? Okay, so a little less in there, thank you for that. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the other side. Questions are great because it gives us time to play a little longer. So you're Thanks already getting compliments on your headpiece. Do you want to know oh, about? You guys, this is all layered jewelry that I'm wearing. Um, so this is the layered jewelry choker that I use for a, a goddess headband because um, just like I was telling you to set your intentions, um, before I came on today, I set my intentions of uh, playing in my closet and then spreading love to myself so I can give love back to you. And I came up with wearing the layered choker as a headpiece. And I encourage you guys to do it. So when you guys are getting ready, put that on and feel fabulous. Play, enjoy yourself, whatever makes you feel good. When I put this on, I stepped into my power. I felt, I felt like I was ready to take on this, you know, to, to have this really beautiful experience with you. So I was intentional about my experience with you today. And I filled myself up and gave myself so much self-love so I could give it back to you. And so that's what this layered jewelry is. And you can wear it as a choker. And there's a little, I'm going to take it off and show you guys. There is this little um, adjustable. So you can wear it as a choker or a goddess headband like me. I'm some definitely people gonna try. Are loving, yes, yeah, so many people are loving your positive vibes, positive energies right now. And I feel like we're all here in the name of self-love. I love it. 
Oh my God, you're gonna make me cry. You guys, thank you so much. Your energy you're giving back to me is just coming through. So I really appreciate that. Thank you for loving yourself and I'm feeling the love you give yourself. Thank you. All right. And also I have the earrings, the choker. Oh, and don't forget the goddess um, bracelet. I love, this is my first piece I bought. When I saw that they had a little ring, <laughs> I was like, oh, that, mm -mm, I gotta have that. It's my favorite piece. I give them away as gifts all the time. And I get so many compliments on it because it's such a unique, fashionable, beautiful, delicate piece. So I love it. Uh, You're I'm right. behind. Thank, I'm like, I'm behind. You guys are probably already done. Let me get this going. So okay. Fran has a question. How do I apply with droopy eyelids? So it would actually be kind of similar to what you're saying as well, right? Yeah. So, okay. So there, I have two thought, two school of thoughts about the, the droopy eyelids or how I'm sure we all, I don't love the wording, but hey. Um, so what you want to do with eyelids that kind of hang down, because mine aren't bad, but as I mature, there are, they are starting to hang a little lower. That's why I have to go in with the crease. So what I like to do is put like, um, maybe start, I don't know your skin tone, but what I like to do is start with the, like a gray undertone, taupey kind of a, like a contour color and just go in, practice this with this brush and that taupey color. I want you to go right where the droop is. And I want you to, to put the brush in there and just start blending it out in that because what I want you to do is take the droop back I want you to get try and camouflage it okay you're basically an illusionist okay as a as a makeup person when you're sitting there you're an illusionist what am I going to bring out what am I going to take away what do I want people to focus on just like a magician so just imagine that you're looking at yourself and you're like hmm, what I love myself I love my lips so I know I'm going to do this but what what is it something that I want to you know not really bring to light. And so that's what you're gonna do with the contour or of whatever color. But I always just like to start with the taupey color, uh, depending on your skin tone that is, um, just to kind of see what it looks like when the contour goes in before I start working with color. But so that'll be your practice for you to do. I hope that answers your question. And the other thing um, that I was gonna say is, whenever somebody sits in my chair and they say, I don't like this, I hate this. I mean, first of all, let's stop that talk, right? I say to them, I look at them like, okay, what do you like about yourself? Let's start there. Always go back to what you like about yourself versus what you dislike about yourself. Because then you can put your energy and self-love into what you do like and focus on that. Bring out your lips, bring out your cheekbones, you know, uh, your hair, and then a bright lip. So um, I just want to, for some reason, I needed to tell you that somebody, anybody that needed to hear that, because I think that sometimes we can get stuck in the place of Oh, I hate this about myself, or why do I have this? But there's so many beautiful things, you know, that we can love about ourselves. And that's what you want to bring out in makeup is, is the things that you love about yourself. Okay. I think this is blended enough. And if it's not, I'll blend it out later. Okay. So we're going to move on. Okay. So this is what I would call just the daytime. Like I just want to run around with myself, my lover, <clears throat> my girlfriend, and I just feel fresh faced. Okay. That's for the eyeshadow. I'm going to go ahead and go into um, the liner part of it before I take this up to the like evening time, the more smoky eyes. So this is basically the look that I'm going to do um, with those three colors. And again, you can deepen it, darken it, play with it have fun there's all these other wonderful colors in fact this is the third look i did because i've been practicing and playing all week trying to create this look for you and so i've tried many different looks and this is the one that resonated with me um, over the other few times that i played with it okay and this i'm doing with you because i didn't even do liner but i love powder liners and i love that when i have my shadows that they can be used i love makeup that can be used multiple different ways. I, you know, like I like eyeshadows that can be blush, eyeshadows that can be eyeliner. So what I'm gonna do is take, uh, I'm gonna take, oh, sorry. I'm gonna take our 10 years younger spray. This is what I'm gonna use for my liner. That's gonna help me get that on just to get the depth. And I'm just gonna dip the angle brush in it. This is just a tip. You guys don't have to do this. You can just use a regular, you know, 
eyeliner and then I'm going to, I'm fever, I keep getting drawn to fever. So I'm gonna dip my brush in and then I'm gonna get close here. And then I'm gonna, whenever you wet an eyeshadow, it's gonna go on with more definition. Okay, so first that's what I want. I want the definition and that's where I'm gonna start before I smoke it out and soften it. Okay, well you see that? Okay, and then I'll do the other side. And you guys can pick any color in that palette. I was actually gonna pick wrecked this purple and then I was gonna pick void. And then it just organically came to me that I needed to do fever. Yes, it's like whatever you want, whatever mood you're in, you can really choose whatever color. So I love that. Yes, let your intuition and while you're in your intention and your play, let it come to you. And that's when the magic happens. You're like, oh, this is what I was supposed to do. And it just happens organically when you sit in the present moment, magic just happens because you're letting things come to you in a playful, organic way. Okay, so there's that. Now, now that it's on, you can see that it's pretty defined, not bad. And then I'm going to take, this is this, it's just a smaller fluffy brush and you can even use the same I'm gonna do one of each so you can see the difference. How about that? Okay, so we have the angle brush and then just this little dense fluffy brush that I'm gonna use. And I'm going to take, uh, let's see here. Let's do fever mixed with attitude. Let's see, fever and then attitude is right before it. I love custom blending my eyeshadow. So I never really just use um, one color. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this kind of fluffy brush and I'm gonna smoke it out right into that deeper line that I did. Okay, and then I'm gonna use the angle brush just so you can get to see a difference with both fever and attitude. Okay, and then I'm gonna smoke it out. Now, because this angle brush is more dense, it's gonna give it more of a definition versus like a, uh, smokier kind of a look. So as you can see, again, this is all for you to see the difference. So, cause this is more defined and then this is more smoky. So whichever you like, I'm gonna go for the smoky. So I'm gonna blend this out. No rules, see what brush works for you. A little advice on brushes guys. Not all brushes are created equal for every part of your face. Remember whenever you're working in an area of your face that you're using the brush that works for the size of the area that you're working in. So that is a good tip. Um, for instance, this brush is a detailing brush, right? You're like, what would I use that for? Well, sometimes you just wanna brighten up like a little uh, highlight. So this brush would be perfect. See, I'm working in a tiny area. Um, this brush is even great for like liner, lips. Oh, you know what else this brush is good for? Let's, if you need to um, touch up uh, your lip or your uh, eyeliner with concealer. So then you can just work in these little areas instead of taking, like, let's see, what was the other brush I used that was? So this is more like somebody would use a concealer brush, you know, like, oh, that's a concealer brush. But now I'm like taking up all this area and all I wanted to do was get right here. So again, brushes are used for the air, the size. It doesn't matter what brush you use, as long as you keep in mind that the size of area that you're working in, you use that brush. Okay, so we got the liner on. We got our daytime shadow. Now we spent the day out. Now we're getting ready to go out with our honey, our girlfriend, whatever. We wanna pump it up because it's nighttime and we really wanna pop and we decided we wanna do a little more self-care and spend a little time in the mirror again. So we're gonna retouch ourselves up with void that is going to be the black eyeshadow and I do like cross using my brushes um, I have a little sponge here that I just kind of wipe off the excess powder you can take a tissue or you could just use it with it you know sometimes it makes the best color okay so I'm going to dip a little void oh I'm going to switch it up on you I decided I'm going to use a different brush this is this angle brush see that I'm going to decide to use that one see I changed. I decided I wanted to play with something else. No big deal, no rules. I don't know why I looked over and it just called for me. So I'm gonna go with that intuition and I'm gonna take just the tip of it, just a little bit right here. 
shake it off because the reason why I chose it now, I realized is because I just want to get really detailed. And I wanna just take it and just put a little bit and a little tiny V, imagine a little V in this corner, pulling it down to the last line. So it's top and then V it down to the lash line. And I just wanna just darken this little corner right here. I love how you're using that color because I would think that most people would be a little intimidated by it. Um, but by you adding that to the corner, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's just a little dabble. And you know what? Now I'm calling for that other brush I first told you to use. I just feel like I really want to stick it in it, stick it like in this crease and just work it out. Remember that technique I told you? Just look ahead and blend and just do little V's and just little circular things. And that just gives it a nice airbrush flow. I love how these colors are just melting together. Yeah, I know you wouldn't think like, I didn't originally use the black until I thought, well, I wanted to pump it up. So I wore it this morning when I was playing with it. And I thought, you know, I am going to add the black. So the black was added this morning. Originally, I wasn't even going to use it. But I thought, well, if I want to go out at night, because there might be somebody on here that loves, like, doesn't want to be safe, but they want to be more neutral, but then just pop in something a little more, you know, um with depth and i and that's what this does is it adds depth it adds more of a crease so again contour and highlighting isn't just for the cheeks or the face contour and highlighting is exactly what you're doing on your eyeshadow that that's exactly what you're doing you're just using colors so um you if you're doing eyeshadow you're good at contouring and highlighting it's not just for the face so that's all i'm doing is contouring and highlighting my um eyeshadow on my eyelid. And then, so I'll just look ahead and just kind of dig in there and just blend out. There's no rules, just play with it. See what feels good, feel, get into the feeling. I want you to feel the brush against your eye and see how that feels and see how you like to create it. That's, that's actually how I learned makeup, you guys. I was doing, I was what, 20? I was doing a modeling shoot and this makeup artist was doing my makeup. I wasn't doing makeup like he was, but I wanted to. And I watched all the brushes and I sat there and I felt everything he did. And I went home. I literally was in my kinetic state of feeling where the brush was going, the eyeshadow that placed it. And then I went home and did the exact same look and just recreate it because I actually felt where everything went. So it's really important to sit in the feeling so you understand why you're doing it too, not just, oh, I don't know why I'm doing it. Well, because you're in your head, get in your body, feel it, and uh, be able to see what works for you, what you like. Okay. All right, guys. So what do you think? This is the, the Galentine's thing that I did for you guys. Um, two different looks um, for the eyeshadow. Does anybody have any questions with that? Because we're going to move on to eyeliner. I'm going to take a sip. I love it. Thank you so much. Like, I can't believe I just made two looks in one moment. Yeah, your eye oh, looks that amazing, Jacqueline. Thank you. Uh, song, help me out. <laughs> I love it. You guys, this just brings me so much joy. Thank you so much. I was like, all that hard work, I'm, and it's working. It makes me happy. Okay. So I only have two eyes, but I have like five tricks. So I'm going to probably explain some and then do a couple of them. Okay. So the one I'm definitely going to show you is this bobby pin trick. Okay, so if you if you don't already, if those of you coming on now, if you don't have a bobby pin, grab one real quick because I'm going to talk about these um, or a piece of paper, business card, post-it notes work, whatever. There's that. And then grab your pitch black liner. If you don't have pitch black liner, you know what else is a good tip, guys? If you have an angle brush, water or our 10 years younger spray with the static palette, you can use void. That's exactly what I would do if I wasn't using this. So, and there's a little ball in here you could shake up, which keeps the product nice and um, mixed. Mm -hmm. So just the other shake tip it up. I have for this product is I do like after you've used it for a while, I like to store it with the tip down just to make sure that you know there's always product going in the felt tip. But that's like after you've used it for quite some while, you know, time. 
I love that you said that. Thank you. Because the other thing is, is you guys notice how when you get these and you're at your end, you've been using every day, it kind of gets like, it's still coming out, but not as much as you want. So you're like, oh, I'm done. It's dry. No, it's not guys. This is your practice pen. Now, this is where you're going to go practice because you don't have all that color. And so that's another tip is you practice with the one that's kind of fading to get your line and then you go in with the good one. So don't throw those out, actually keep using them so you can practice getting your lines right. And then once you place it, it's kind of like, a, what is it? Those coloring books that have the outlines. It's kind of like you're already outlining it and then you take your black and just go in and it'll be easy. So use those pens that are a little dried up for you to practice creating your lines and that's how you'll get good at it. Okay. Okay, uh, which I, okay, first of all, the paper, uh, business card, the reason why I asked you to grab this is because you can actually, so what you want to do is your lash line, your lower lash line meets the tip, and make sure your eyebrows are done, guys. Oh, if you're wondering why you may be having troubles getting your liner to go straight and you don't have your eyebrows done, imagine your eyebrows are your guide. Okay, so you want to make sure your point is on point, your eyebrows are done so you can use it to guide you. So how I like to do it is think of the lash line and where, and at the tip of my brow. So you're thinking that's where I want my uh, cat liner to start to, to go in that, like right there. So it's gonna go right here. And I could literally look at my eye and have that imaginary line already planted and do it and be done. So as you practice, you'll get like that. Another way is what people like to do or people or whoever is to take the card and guide it here. Again, it's at the bottom tip of your um, eyebrow and your lash line, and you just draw a little line up here to guide you, okay? So there's that tip, and there's a dot trick. So I'll do the dot trick and this trick, okay? This point on this pen is, uh, is amazing for this trick. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna take the bottom, the longer bottom, and you're gonna drop it to the lower lash line, just like so. See how that's there? Okay. And then, oops, so good, I'm coloring my finger. Then you're gonna take the tip and just, oop, I jumped outside the line, but that's okay. See guys, even though I'm a makeup artist, I too have challenges. So are you going in between the two? Yes. And, okay. Yes, in between, it's the per, it's so perfect. And that's why I have the Q-tips. Again, what, if it's still wet, you can maneuver this product very well. I love okay. that trick. I, I have never used that personally, but. Yeah, and then you have it nice and set up right there and then you can go back in. And I have to tell you, I, I bumped it, so it didn't go all the way through. Now, I have lashes, so I generally don't wear liner. So I'm not in practice, but if I was in practice, it would be easier. So just keep in mind, even though I'm a makeup artist, do not compare yourself to anybody else, okay? We all have what we're good at. You know, I have lashes, so I don't really have to wear it, but I've been practicing for you guys. I've been playing because I wanted this to be intentional. And these are the tips and tricks I came up with for you. Keep in mind, guys. Another little thing, because I don't want you to get frustrated. While you're doing a liner, keep your eyes open, but down, kind of like a down motion in the mirror. And you got to wait for it to dry. Otherwise, it's going to go on your eyelid, and then it's like all that shadow, okay? So I'm telling you this because I want you to enjoy it and just keep in mind that, you know, you don't want to, you want to make sure it's drying. So I like to look down and then draw it across in little strokes on when I have it. If you want, you can draw it all the way across, but I like to take little baby, like connect the dots because I feel like I can get to the lash line real easily and then my hand isn't shaking going across. The other thing I'd like to do is kind of rest my pinky on my cheek too, mm -hmm. or, you know, wherever that is to kind of steady your hand. But I do the same thing with like little dashes instead of trying to like draw a really precise line. Yes. And, and keep in mind, 
skin. <laughs> so if you're closing your eyes and you're doing this and you're like, why isn't it going across? It's because you're crunching up your skin. And when you're putting your light on, you're looking down and it's like, it's PC. So that's why you kind of want to give the, you want your to do a natural stretch in your eye by looking down and into the mirror. And since this is supposed to happen, I believe everything in life is supposed to happen to us for us to grow, to share, to experience. Do you see how I got that liner up top? Well, you can take the Q-tip, wipe it down. Sometimes it's already dry. I take the brush and blend it in. No worries, right? It's all good. You don't have to wipe it all off. Okay. All right. It's not the best job on there, but you know what? I love it because I worked really hard on it <laughs> and I'm keeping it. Okay, so there's that trick. Now, the second trick on this eye, I'm gonna do the dotting technique. So this one I'm gonna take and place about seven to eight dots right where I want the liner to go. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I got it right up here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the dots on the center. It's really hard to do on camera, by, but I'm gonna connect the dots. So this is where I have the dots put on where the other side, I had the imaginary dots. So if you needed a little help, then this is how you do the dots. So until you get really good at it and you don't need to put them on. Okay, now when you're going up into this corner, the trick is, is to stay on the top of the dots, not on the base, because this is where you're gonna create that cat eye. How are you guys doing out there? Good. <laughs> this yes. is so- Facebook are loving your um, trick with the bobby pin. Oh, you guys, when I, you, when you're sitting in front of your mirror and not this camera, it just, oh my gosh, it's mwah, perfect. It's I had so never done it before and like, it totally is a-, a Works. It is a game changer. It's something we all probably have sitting around and now you can use it for that. Okay, so that's the connect the dot trick. And then you can go in and, you know, uh, even it out. And I just want to tell you guys, I am really good at putting makeup on other people, but eyeliner, it can be challenging. So I want you to love yourself through this and just give yourself enough time um, and don't be afraid of it, okay? Because the only way you're going to get better at it is if you challenge yourself to play with it, all right? And you've got a, a few tricks now up your sleeves and you'll get good at it, I promise. I love it. Okay, so, oh, thank you. oh, that's a dog. <laughs> that's my little Coco. She's a Yorkie. I have uh, two dogs and two cats. I think I think one of your cats was in the background too before. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like it's like the animal kingdom here. I live with them, so love it. I'm just glad they're not barking. Okay, now oh. something's telling me to use this eyeliner on the bottom. They are like children. So what I can do is just take this tip and uh, this black pointer. And what I wanna do is draw it from the top liner. Very so, you know, just, just using the very pointed part of it because I want it to be in very control. Now, if I lay it flat, then it might get too fat. This, liner is not going to go anywhere. Once it's dried, it stays on, which I love because I like to smile and I warm up my shadows and then they start to do that little thing in there. And it's okay. It's natural because you're naturally warming things up on your body. That means you're alive and your blood is pumping. So it's not a bad thing. It's just something that happens. But this liner is not moving is what I'm trying to say. And I'm only gonna go halfway in with this liner. 
no reason just because I feel like it I, and when you go halfway in it keeps your the illusion that your eyes are more open so imagine if you line your whole eye you're close you know you're giving it a smokier defined look because you're defining it but imagine if you line it and kept this open you're keeping that eye open if, I, if I, this example is even reading right are you going along the lash line or on your water line lash line Now, can you see the difference how this has just a little more definition? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's just a little something. So if you wanted just to, if you're somebody, cause I know I'm speak, I'm, I had to say this to somebody out there who's like, but I always line my lash. Somebody said it and I'm telling you, you can with this liner and it's not gonna move. And now you have a way where you can go all the way across, halfway across, and you'll know why you're doing that. Okay, let's do the other side. I love that. It looks beautiful. Thank you. I feel beautiful. This stuff, this makeup always makes me feel fabulous. I have attached a feeling to it because every time I use it, I, it makes me happy. So I love that you said that. Okay. Should uh, I go on to the, how's everyone doing out there? Is there any more questions? Is everyone still playing? I think everybody's doing good. Yeah. Okay. Doing good, still loving all your tips and tricks. So perfect. So Lee, did you want to do the did yeah. you want me to okay? Let's go for the lashes. Um, so for all of you, why don't you go ahead and if you have one, curl your lashes. What I like to do is start at the base of my lashes and kind of squeeze and hold that for a couple seconds. And then I like to go actually like almost halfway up, squeeze and hold again. And depending on how long your lashes are, you can even go towards the tips. So that's going to give you more of like an actual curl versus just like up. <laughs> um, so I always like to curl my lashes prior to eyelash application. And um, it actually makes a really big difference. So even for those of you that aren't applying lashes, curl your lashes. It's going to make them, your eyes look a little bit more open. It's going to make your lashes look longer. And you can kind of get the mascara in there to make them look a little bit fuller too. So once you do that, I'm going to use my Fiber Lush mascara. And I like to just go underneath and kind of wiggle at the base and then pull up and just kind of work in that mascara. And that almost gives you the look of like a very natural falsy. So if you're like, okay, that's good enough, but if you want to flutter your lashes a little bit and enhance them a little bit more, we have an amazing lash bundle and I'm just going to hold this up so you all can see um, the different styles. So there's actually five different lash styles that come in the bundle and it's super, super discounted right now. If you get the bundle, it actually comes with some adhesive too. So you get a little pack of adhesive. So let me just kind of run through each lash. So we have, 109s and these are going to be a little bit more natural but make them look fuller so if you're like okay i want my lashes to be a little bit more thick this would be a great option for you and then we have the 110s which are actually kind of long all the way across so these are going to give you a lot of length but these are actually like real hair fibers so they're very light and i want you to look at the band on them too because the band is really thin which actually helps them be a little bit more comfortable. Um, usually if you haven't worn lashes, you don't want to like really feel them a lot. And then we have the 111s, which are actually flared in the center. So they're a little bit more tapered on each end, flared in the center. So that's going to give you a little bit more volume in the center and length. And then we have the 112s, which are kind of staggered. So these are going to also be another natural lash. And then we have 113s, which actually kind of are like very, I don't know, they're fun. They have like the thickness and they have the length all in one lash, but they're staggered and they look very, oh, actually, I think I'm, let me see. Yeah, I'm going to use the 110s. So these are a little bit more flared on the outside. And these are going to give me a little bit more of a bold look. 
So when you first pick out your lashes, what I want you to do is just slowly peel them away. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to actually measure to see if you need to trim them at all. And you actually don't want them to be any wider than your own lash line. The other thing that I use is I use a tool um, like this. If you don't have a lash applicator, you can just use a tweezers. That works really well too. And you can use your fingers if you don't have that. So they are a little bit different. I know uh, different. I know on a camera it's hard to see, but so I'm just measuring. I'm just placing them on to see if I need to trim them. And if you do have to trim them, I recommend trimming from the outside corner, kind of on an angle. That's the best place to do it. So the, the two things that I see people do wrong when they're trying to apply their own lashes is they actually close their eyes. And like Song said, when you close your eyes, it, the skin kind of scrunches up. So if you do that and then apply your lash, when you open your eyes, it's going to pop right off. So um, you don't want to do that. What I, what I suggest you do is look down. The other thing that I see people do is they don't wait for the adhesive to set enough before they apply it to their lash. So a little secret about the adhesive that comes with this lash bundle, the Motives adhesive is white in color, but when you actually put it on the lash and it's ready, it'll turn blue. So this is a little tube. You can probably get about four uses, maybe three or four uses out of it. The first time you open it, it has like a little, you just tear it off, but then you can actually close it again. You just turn, turn it over. Okay. So where did I get this tool? I just got it at any drugstore. So um, you can just go to your local drugstore and you should be able to find it. So just apply a thin strip of adhesive to your lashes. Now, if you're afraid to get too much on, then what you can do is just put a little bit on your hand and then you can just take the lash and just uh, kind of go like that on your hand to get it on there. So let me just put enough on and show you. I always like to put a little extra adhesive on each end because that's where most of the pressure is going to be on there. But just let it set for like, I usually let it set for a good 45 seconds. I know that on most packages, it'll say like 30 seconds. The longer you wait, the better because it almost gets like a rubber cement kind of pliable glue. And it's going to actually stick to your lash when you put it on. So you can see, I don't know, can you guys see that? Eh, maybe not. It's turning a little bit blue on the ends. So we're just going to wait and you can go like this. Don't blow on it. We never want to blow on anything that's going to go near our eyes and just wait until that's enough. So with this pair, I want to make sure that the flare is actually on the outer corner. So this lash will be going on this side. And what's really great about it is it's like this. So if it, if you took the lash from this side, it goes on this side. If you took the lash from this side, it goes on this side. Okay. And once that you feel like it's uh, set enough, then what I want you to do is look down. I'm gonna try to do this without a mirror. Look down and start placing the lash. You can actually place it in the center first, and then I'll usually take it and make sure that it's secure in the corner, and then I'll take the inner corner and secure it in my inner corner. Now, if these lashes are not bending enough to your eyes. What you can do while you're getting ready for the next one is actually take the lash and bend it around your finger. And that'll kind of get the seam uh, moving a little bit so it's not so straight. Sometimes if they aren't real pliable, then they'll just go stick straight and then they won't adhere to the shape of your eye. I don't have as much issue with these because they are such a thin strip at the lash. And then what you wanna do is just, you can either take your tool or you can take your fingers and just squeeze at the base just to make sure that they are in with your lashes. And if you have to, 
you can take a little spoolie and just make sure you comb your lashes into the artificial lashes. I know some people like to put some mascara on the artificial. I don't because I feel like they have enough without it and I already have mascara on my own lashes and then I don't have to clean them when I wanna wear them next time. <laughs> just a little trick that I did. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other eye. So same process. So who is putting the lashes on with me? Make sure that you ask if you have any questions because I wanna make sure that you guys feel a little bit more comfortable if you haven't been using them yet. So then let me put a little bit of adhesive on my next lash. And then what I do, you guys, is I just save this little container here. And when I take them off tonight, I'll just pop them right back in here and I will use them quite a few times before I have to throw them away. So um, in the lash bundle, you're getting quite a few lashes that, I mean, they'll, you'll be able to use them and they, um, when you do take the lashes, if you're finding that you can't reuse them after a time or two, just take the glue and gently peel it off. And that'll almost kind of give you brand new lashes again. Sometimes the glue gets cluttered on there and it just yeah. isn't sticking. Yeah, and this glue is really great. Like you can just kind of take your fingernails and just kind of take the glue off. Or what you can do is take a Q-tip with some of our micellar cleanser and just kind of rub a little bit if it needs a little help coming off. So I'm just kind of reading the comments here. So Michelle said, my lashes are on when I did Las, Las Vegas shows and danced in cruise ships on, in the early 90s. We lashed on for hours at a time. <laughs> I love that. And, and that's the thing, like it might be really difficult the first time you do it, but it'll get easier. Trust me. I remember like the first time I had like glue up here and I'm like, oh my gosh. But just like Song said, like take a Q-tip, remove the glue right away and you'll be good to go. So let me just put my next one on. And also just take a moment and like trust yourself and like, you know what you're doing. And if you yeah. don't, you'll fix it. So letting go and just kind of trying it out. Absolutely, Jacqueline. I love that you said that because that's where I was going with it. I think that we put so much pressure on ourselves to be perfect or to be like somebody else. And the thing is, it's just like, you're, you're perfect just the way you are and you're exactly where you need to be, but also where did you put your efforts? You know, if you put a little more effort into that, you will be magnificent at it. So just know that the more effort you put, the more the better the results can become. I love that. And I know I said that this adhesive turns blue, but once it totally dries, then it's clear. So if you're like, wait a minute, I don't want blue adhesive, don't worry. So sometimes if the blue is still setting, your eyelashes might kind of stick together a little bit. Don't panic. Once the glue dries, it won't do that anymore. And in fact, most of my clients that wear them for the first time, within a minute, they're like, oh, I can't even really feel that I'm wearing them anymore. It just might feel a little awkward at first, but you will get used to it, especially if they're high quality lashes like these, because I have worn other lashes that have a thick band and it's not that comfortable. Like I want to be able to like wear something comfortable and these you could wear all day no problem. And then tonight when I want to take them off, all I do is just grab in the corner and they just peel right off and doesn't take any of my lashes with it or anything. So that's my quick lash tutorial. So I hope that helped guys. Yes, I love it. I can't wait to put my lashes on this weekend. <laughs> and Betty actually had a good point. Thanks for bringing this up, Betty. So this lash adhesive, um, one of these little vials actually fits perfectly in underneath where you store the lashes. So I just put it under there so that I can use it for next time. And yeah, and Melissa says, practice, practice, practice. That's what it's all about. Or play, play, play. Yeah. <laughs> play, play, play. I feel like when we don't attach a work to it and we turn it into play, it makes it more enjoyable. So I like to change the narrative or the words. So we can uh, make it more fun, you know? And there's actually a quote that I wanted to read for you guys. And it's by Albert Einstein and says, play is the highest form of research. And um, the other one I wanted to say is children learn as they play, but most importantly, children learn how to learn as they play. So 
why aren't we doing this as adults? Why did we, how did we forget to play? You know, the kids would put the little triangle in those little boxes and squares and circles, yeah. and they were just having so much fun learning and playing. But then when we grow up, we tend to, you know, how exciting was it to do makeup when we were teenagers? You know, we couldn't wait to play for hours. And then when we grow up, it's like, oh, that's work to put makeup on. <laughs> And, you know, so it's really about going back to that. I love it. So I think we're ready for our lips right now. And I wanted to swatch all the colors just for those of you that wanted to see what was all in the lip kit. So let me just start with fire. Um, so this is kind of like a red, but I would say that it has a little bit more of a warmer undertone to it, hence the name fire. But then it also has more of like a pinky red and the pinky red is actually called risky. So I'm going to swatch that right next and I'll put my hand up closer when I'm done. So that is risky. So now if you guys wanted me to wear red, you have to choose which red you want me to wear. And then the next one is rosewood and rosewood is a nice like pink color. Um, it's one of those pinks that really does look good on all skin tones because I would say it's more of a neutral undertone. And then we have fetish, which is going to be your neutral, which is a little bit lighter. So you guys see that? There we go. So you really do get a nice variety and you can even create like ombre lips with them too. So you can wear like all four colors separately. You can mix and match them together. You can wear one during the day, one at night. There's so many options. So with that being said, I know you're gonna use um, fetish. Which red should I use? I almost feel like I should go with risky um, just because my shirt is a little bit more on this tone. Um, so if you guys are good with that, I'm, I'm gonna apply that. But if you wanna start applying your lip color um, song and kind of show them how I, I did use a, the Dusty Rose lip liner. That's what's on my lip right now. And what I like to do is define my lip and then I like to fill in with that lip liner. So it just gives that extra staying power. But more importantly, it's about the prep that you do before because you wanna make sure you have kissable lips, especially if you're using a bright color like red. So um, our vanilla lip mask is single-handedly one of the most important preps that I keep next to my nightstand in my handbag that lip mask is epic. I have people buying that for me like crazy because especially with these, you know, we're always dehydrated, drinking coffees all day. Like even though you're dehydrated, your lips don't have to be. I put that lip mask on, I kid you not, it lasts for hours. It's just, it's, it's thick. And I don't want you to be intimidated because when I first got it, I was like, oh, it's kind of thick. I had this story that I made up. And when I really used it, I put it on before I went to bed. I woke up the next morning, it was still on, no moisture whisk, whisked away from my lips at all. And now I like it during the day because I live in Las Vegas and it is just dry here. And that lip mask is incredible. If you haven't gotten it, I really encourage you to get it and then just send me a message and tell me I was right because I mean, I am, it's amazing. <laughs> I know I your lips it. feel like, like so soft when you wake up. I wish that I would remember to do it every night because when I do remember, I'm like, oh my gosh, like they do feel really good. I have a solution for you. Keep it right next to your nightstand. Yeah. Right before I go to bed, I have a jar. Of, again, Vegas is dry. I cannot survive without having a jar of lotion next to my bed and uh, the lip cream. So when I brush my teeth, makeup off, getting ready for bed, I sit down. <sighs> breathing out the day and I look over I'm like oh my lip mask oh my hand lotion because I like to cake my hands too because they get so dry so I cake my hands in the Lumiere de Vie body and uh, what is it body hand and body lotion hand and body cream oh my gosh that that too guys right next to your nightstand those two items will save your hands and your lips and you'll wake up with kissable lips I promise and your hands will feel like butter okay so I'm going to use my fetish and after I put my liner on, I'm just using it straight from the tube um, first and just to get the basic color on there, just through the lip line. Being that I have liner on, it's going to be, I don't, I just follow the inside of the line. And then I'm going to take my lip brush and just make sure that it is all nice and blended and even. And then a little trick for you red wearers, because 
that's an amazing color. And actually, I'm a red wearer myself. Um, what I like to do is take this little brush, it's like a concealer brush, and just take a little bit of like a concealer, lip color, and I will go and clean up and make it nice and even in areas of the red lip where the red is. That is a game changer because sometimes that red bleeds over and I'll just nice and even out. And this is also good for the liner. So let's say your liner came down and you just wanted to clean it up. You'll take that and just put it right under uh, that and give you more of a defined look if you can see that. So same thing with the lips. And that is a little trick I do with red lips and with my liner if I need to clean it up oh, with cool. the concealer. I love that. So this is the color that everybody chose risky. And I do like it because it's kind of like pinky, but it's like a red too. Um, I feel like it would be a red that anyone could wear too, because especially for Valentine's Day, like why not use that as an excuse to just do it, right? That's what that looks Gorgeous. Like. Looks great. Anybody have um, any other questions? Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mendy. You're so sweet. I love you. You did such an amazing job tonight. It was so like fun to just have you and your energy and, you know, all of your lessons and you know, I, I learned a thing or two. And I mean, there's always something to learn, right? So I just really appreciate you taking time out and being here with us. Um, for those of you that, you know, went along with us, we would love to see your looks. If you could share them on social media and take Motives Cosmetics in them, we want to see even, you know, more so than our panelists. We had a lot of people watching tonight. So we'd love to see what all of you created. And then I also wanted to invite you to our next beauty lounge that will be on March 8th. It's at the same time. It's at the same link. We're going to be bringing you a new, uh, a new subject next time. So make sure that you look for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then Jacqueline, I know you wanted to let them know that we have a, a fun surprise for everybody. Yes, so I'm super excited because you guys are going to be the first to know that we will be having a giveaway for the Pure Love Lip Set on mm -hmm. Motives Cosmetics Instagram. And so we'll be posting that shortly after this. Um, so you guys can go ahead and go in there, comment, follow all the steps so that you can be the first to enter the giveaway. And we're going to be choosing three winners. So uh, I'm really Ooh. excited about that. Yeah, so you can get all four colors that I swatched <laughs> on, on here. Um, but like, make sure you check out our website because it's a really nice savings with the bundle of getting these all together. So even if you break them up for gifts for your friends, um, why not just like gift them with something that'll make them feel good too. But I appreciate all of our panelists for being here too. You guys look all amazing. Oh my gosh. Like you looked amazing before we started, but <laughs> you look, you look all amazing now too. It's all that love you're giving to yourself. It's coming out. I can see it Aww. too. That's awesome. So somebody asked about thin lips and I wanted to address this because um, again, same with the thin lips is, is the eyes is the contour, right? So if you want to, you're going to need to do a little more contouring um, and it's also highlighting contouring. So if your lips are thin on the top, you're going to want to draw it just a little over, but then imagine putting like a highlight at the tips that's gonna pull that lip forward, okay? So imagine even on your lips, you might have to ombre it. Again, this is where you get to play and learn about your face and practice. So if you want, you know, you're just gonna go in there and line the lips how you want it. And then imagine whatever you're putting lighter there is what's gonna pop bigger, bold, you know? And whatever you're darkening is gonna kind of recess it all. So you can actually give the contrast that something's coming out towards you. So it's all an illusion. So, I love that. Um, and I wanted to actually just also say that um, in the palette, we have Spell. This would be like a great highlighter too. Like you could just take this and put a little bit here on your nose, put a little bit on your Cupid's bow, which is going to highlight around that lip area too, and play with this palette because there's so much in You can put a little bit on the, you know, 
on the high points of your cheeks as well. You could yep. even use Rush and Hardwired um, yep. too. So think outside the box a little bit, not just eyeshadow. So I'm gonna put Rush or maybe I should do, I might just actually do Hardwired. I'm just gonna add it to the tip of that bow where I was telling you, just to show you on my lips. Yep, that already it's, looks a little bit like just fuller, did, poutier. That's just a highlight, that's all I did. So just play with it. Um, I don't know the shape of your look in front of me, um, but that just know that it's for you to practice so you can get to know you know, your face. And my lips look funny now because it looks huge on the top. So let's just, it looks let's, just that, let's just add it to that Love it. bottom part there. I want mine to look bigger. I know. <laughs> I use hard wire, guys. I use that hard wire that we use. And another thing I want to tell you, after we added that, um, uh, the darker color, I actually went in when Lee was doing her lashes and I went and popped it out even more um, and just gave it more of a brightness. So, you know, because sometimes over blending that light color might come off. You can just go in and just enhance it a little more as well. Love it. Thank you so, so much. And I hope everybody enjoyed it. Please be sure to also comment on our post. Let us know one thing that you learned tonight. And, uh, and then make sure that you share. This will be up on, you know, live on our Facebook. Make sure you share it with a friend or two and, you know, spread the love. But thank you so much, Song, for being here yeah. tonight. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time. I mean, your guys' time is precious, but more importantly, you showed up for yourself. And I just wanted to thank you. I feel all the love and gratitude and I'm just beaming right now and I have so much energy from you. So thank you for the exchange. And for those of you that participated, I want you to know that you helped me grow too. You taught me something because you triggered something inside me that wanted to explain something. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So you guys be brave out there, ask questions and, and thank you for participating in this experience. It was fun. I love it. Thank you so much, dear. And everybody have a happy Valentine's Day. Yes, enjoy. Bye, ladies. Bye.